Hello and welcome to my overview of installing Exchange 2013 uh, release preview on Windows 2008 R2. Um, what I intend to do in this first part of uh, what will be a two-part series is take you through the um, setup prerequisites before you actually install Exchange 2013. Um, there are eight steps. Um, uh, in terms of actual installation of physical binaries um, and there are also a couple of commands that you need to uh, execute at the end uh, to ensure that uh, the actual setup um, of Exchange 2013 runs correctly. Video itself will be approximately, uh, this video will be approximately 13 minutes although the entire setup process in reality potentially takes about 40 to 45 minutes um, on a reasonably specced lab server. Uh, whilst on the point of uh, lab servers, it's absolutely key that you actually do do this in a lab. Um, Exchange 2013 is pre-release software uh, and therefore is not supported in production unless you're um, a member of the TAP program where you have uh, appropriate Microsoft assistance. So the first step is to download um, all of the uh, prerequisite uh, binary files. These are detailed here. Um, I've numbered them one to seven. There's actually eight. Um, that's mainly because there is a service pack to the office filter pack. And the first uh, step is to down uh, is to download and install um, .NET uh, f uh, four point five. Uh, which is also a preview release at the moment. Um, over here, um, there are, uh, there is a, a pop-up box showing you where you can get these downloads from, uh, download locations, where you can click on them should you wish to. So, without further ado, let's get off and uh, begin installing .NET, uh, uh, .NET uh, 4.5. So, double-clicking on the file, um, I've presented with a security warning. You can unblock the file, so it runs without this should you wish to. Um, I'm leaving it intact uh, on my platform, so click, I click on Run. And what will happen is the bootstrapper will extract its own relevant files um, to the temporary location on your machine and begin the process of uh, the setup wizard. This setup wizard itself will uh, go away and analyze your machine and work out what files for 4.5 it needs to bring down from the internet. So it's quite important that your lab machine that you're uh, going to be installing Exchange 2013 on has an internet connection. First part is you're presented with the licensing agreement. Uh, obviously, if you want to progress, that you need to uh, tick that you've read and accept the terms of the agreement. Um, you've got an estimate of how many, uh, basically the size of files that need to be downloaded and a rough time estimate of how long that's going to take. When you're ready, click on install. And as you can see, uh, a download process will begin and you'll get an overall installation process here, um, which once completed will take you to uh, the summary screen. Now that .NET 4.5 has been successfully installed, we are able to move on to the next phase uh, or the next uh, prerequisite that needs to be placed upon your server, which is the Windows Management Framework 3.0, uh, which contains a number of uh, required updates, not least of which is uh, PowerShell 3, which naturally Exchange 2013 is highly dependent upon. So double clicking on the bootstrapper, will uh, kick the setup off, uh, which will have a look at your machine to ensure it's not already there, and then it will ask you if you would like to install. This particular uh, setup uh, will require a reboot at the end. You can, uh, I believe at some points, continue installing the prereqs if you want, but I recommend that when the system actually asks for a reboot that you actually perform it and then continue installing updates uh, for cleanliness, cleanliness and uh, best practice sake. So again, we're presented with a licensing agreement. Click on Accept, which will then take you through uh, to the next part of the process, which is to install the actual update on your system. When the management framework has uh, completed, as mentioned, you'll be asked to restart the computer, uh, which, as I said, I recommend that you do. So click on the restart button um, and when the machine has rebooted we are ready to resume the prerequisite setup with step 3. 
Now that we've rebooted um, after installing the Windows Management Framework, we are now ready to install the Unified Communications Managed API version 4. Uh, this is a new prerequisite introduced for Exchange 2013 um, and inst installs a number of Unified Communications uh, API components that aid with better integration with Link Server and the like. Um, double clicking on the UCMA runtime setup will initially begin to copy a number of files to your local machine as well as uh, perform a prerequisites test uh, to ensure that um, all of the required Windows operating system components are present and correct. As you can see we're beginning the file copy process now. This takes potentially about two to three minutes. Um, it's a little bit faster on my machine because I've managed to pre-cache some of the uh, some of the files in temp. Uh, or, um, uh, basically I've run this already at some point in preparation for this video. The Microsoft Unified Communications uh, Managed API setup has uh, assessed my machine uh, at this point and is now ready to install the components which are listed here. So click on next and accept the uh, license agreement terms. You have the option to send um, feedback about the setup experiences to Microsoft should you wish. As I said, that I've um, already run this once before and uh, had that selected, so for this time uh, I won't. So click on install and the uh, setup installer will go away and place the relevant components on your server. When the installation is complete, you will be presented with uh, a screen that asks you whether you would like to check for the most recent versions of the software through Windows Update, and you have the opportunity to install additional language packs. Um, at this point, click on Finish, and you're then ready to move on to Step 4, which is installing the Microsoft Office, uh, Microsoft Office filter packs. Uh, quite a quick install. Um, double click. And for those of you that have set up Exchange 2010, this will be very, very familiar. Run through the setup wizard, accepting the license agreement. Um, as I said, the filter packs are relatively small, so they don't take very long to uh, install. So once the install is published, the product information will be then ready to move on and install Service Pack 1 uh, of the Office Filter Pack. So I click OK there. Move into Service Pack 1, accept the licensing terms, and continue. Once that installation is complete, we can now move on to install the Windows Identity Foundation components. Double click on the bootstrapper, which will check to see whether the Identity Foundation has previously been installed. Once it's found that it hasn't, it asks you to confirm if you'd like to install the software update. Click on Yes and accept the licensing agreement and setup will then continue. Once setup is completed, you will be able to click on Close and continue with the installation. Uh, the next step is to install um, a Windows hotfix which is located under KB2619234 and it in essence enables the association of cookie stroke GUID um, that is used by uh, RPC over HTTP um, which is also to be used at the RPC layer in Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. Um, you have to request this hotfix um, through Microsoft um, over here there will be a link to where you can go to to actually request the hotfix to be emailed to you and in order to install it just double click upon it or we'll search to see if it's present and confirm the installation there and it will begin installing. Once this hotfix has been installed again you will need to reboot your server again you can try and continue if you so wish to but I recommend that you uh, click on the restart now button and then resume um, the prerequisites installed post reboot. 
once the reboot is completed, um, you are ready to install um, the final uh, piece of uh, prerequis prerequisite software, which is a Windows security patch, which is referenced in KB2533623, and it's a um, security patch to prevent the insecure load, uh, library loading, uh, which could allow for remote code execution. If you have um, done a full Windows update on your server before you've begun this installation progress, this patch is already installed as it is in my environment because if I double click on the file the bootstrap loader will fire up, search my machine and find that it's already present. So at the moment it's analysing my machine. And as you can see the um, utility has come back or the installer has come back rather saying that the update is not applicable to my computer. So that's all of the software prerequisites installed. What we now need to do is to jump into programs and features and uninstall the Microsoft Visual C++ 11 beta redistributable, that's easy for me to say, um, before we begin the process of installing Exchange 2013 uh, release preview. So by removing it from programs and features brings up its setup process. As you can see previously I clicked uninstall which goes through the um, uh, procedure of removing the binaries from my machine. I click close and it disappears from programs and features. And now on to our final step which is to register ASP.NET with um, .NET Framework 4.5 in IIS. We do this by opening up a Windows command prompt and I'm going to paste a command in which will be available for you to see on the right hand side of the screen which basically uses the Reg IIS tool to um, ensure that the framework and ap relevant application pools are set to use version 4.5 of the .NET framework. When this uh, process is completed, we then have to run an IIS reset, which once that has completed, we are now ready to install Exchange 2013 onto the server, uh, which I'll be covering in the next part uh, of this two-part video series. So thank you very much for uh, watching so far.